All right, friends, so it seems official. The race is on. You know, I think at first some people thought that RFK Jr. might have just been playing or that he wasn't serious, that he wasn't going to stick through this whole process. Well, at this point, he's proved all those people very, very wrong. RFK Jr. is in the race. He's already on the ballot in some of the most crucial states, which completely changes the game. Democrats, of course, as we know, are panicking. And Jen Psaki essentially admitted that on MSNBC the other day. There is an aggressive effort that the campaign has been working with the Democratic National Committee on to run on this. But it needs to be broad. People need to be shouting it from the rooftops because this is the one of the biggest threats um, to Joe Biden being reelected is these third party candidates. Well, now it's even more official as Robert F. Kennedy Jr. has picked a running mate. That changes everything. In fact, that now gives him access or a path towards access to the ballot in Pennsylvania. And so it's getting real, real. Let's continue to do all the polling analysis. And most importantly, let's see how RFK Jr. is affecting this race. All eyes are on Pennsylvania. We got some stuff to get into. So let's roll the tape. All right, folks. So I guess we're calling it the ballot wars. The ballot wars have begun. I'm not exactly sure of every state that Robert F. Kennedy Jr. has made the ballot so far, but I know there's a good chunk of states, and some of these states are crucial swing states, like Michigan, for instance. But the one state that we all got our eyes on is the state of Pennsylvania. If Democrats let Pennsylvania go to Trump, it is over. I mean, over, over. And if Robert F. Kennedy Jr. gets on the ballot, well, as we've been covering, it's bad news. Right now, the state's at a statistical tie in terms of early polling data. Trump leads by 0.2% in the RCP average. But the moment you introduce independent candidates, his lead skyrockets. In fact, the most recent morning consult slash Bloomberg poll shows a plus six Trump lead. And so here's where the ballot wars begin. The Democrats are doing everything that they can to ensure that Bobby Kennedy is refused participation in the Democratic process because, I don't know, democracy or something. That's what Democrats are always going on about. But so far, it seems like Bobby's winning and he's got a plan. Gathering signatures for RFK Jr. to get on the ballot. This is from his website, by the way. Here's an event on March 13th in Millersville, Pennsylvania. They canceled the event, writing this event is canceled on Wednesday, March 13th because Robert F. Kennedy Jr has not announced his vice president yet. The state of Pennsylvania will not count signatures as legitimate until he names his VP. I will reschedule this event after he has announced his VP. And so a couple days later, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. announces his VP. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. running as an independent presidential candidate today announced his running mate. She is 38-year-old Nicole Shanahan, a wealthy attorney and entrepreneur in the San Francisco Bay Area. Shanahan, like Kennedy, has never run for elected office. She has contributed to his campaign and reportedly paid four million dollars for a Super Bowl ad promoting his campaign. Kennedy made the announcement in her hometown of Oakland. And so now it seems like the signature events are going to start. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is likely to get the signatures very quickly. In other words, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is likely to get on the ballot in Pennsylvania. <laughs> Despite the Democrat efforts, he had to cancel that event because supposedly, according to Kennedy's team, the DNC at the last second made a rule change in an effort to invalidate his signatures and force him off the ballot. Kennedy campaign takes on DNC ballot scam in Nevada. The DNC just tried to invent a, quote, new rule in a desperate attempt to keep Kennedy off the ballot in Nevada, but it isn't going to work. The campaign submitted more than 15,000 signatures required on March 5th, and then today the DNC and Democrat Secretary of State tried to change the rules to require a name to VP or else invalidate RFK Jr.'s signatures the day before he named his VP. Here's the reply from Kennedy's team. This corrupt attempt by the Nevada Secretary of State must be enjoined by a federal judge. The Kennedy campaign intends to depose the Secretary of State to find out exactly which White House or DNC official concocted this scheme. This is the epitome of corruption, Kennedy campaign ballot access attorney Paul Rossi. After successfully collecting all the signatures we needed in Nevada, the DNC and the Nevada Secretary of State's office are outright inventing new requirements for the petition with zero legal basis. The Nevada statute does not require the VP on the petition. The petition does not even have a field for a VP on it. The state confirmed that the petition does not require a VP in writing on November 18th, or rather November 14th. The state approved our petition without a VP on it in writing on January 9th. Of course, the Democrat media is celebrating this. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. may have to start all over again in a state where he was trying to get ballot access. We learned that Kennedy's efforts to get on the ballot in Nevada could be invalidated because the petition they submitted to the Nevada Secretary of State's office didn't include a vice presidential pick on it before they began circulating it for signatures. It's important to note that the petition given to the campaign by the Secretary of State's office only had one line for the independent candidate. The Kennedy campaign said it collected 15,000 signatures to get on the ballot in Nevada, but 
According to the Nevada Secretary of State's office, an employee misinformed the campaign at the start and told them they didn't need a vice presidential pick on the petition, which is why the campaign is now threatening a lawsuit against the Nevada office. Kennedy actually did announce a running mate on Tuesday, just a day after the campaign threatened a lawsuit. The Kennedy campaign said it plans to kick off the petition process in 19 more states where a vice presidential pick is required for an independent candidate to run in the presidential election. Kennedy and Shanahan are still facing the uphill battle of trying to collect hundreds of thousands of signatures across all 50 states and spending millions of dollars to gain ballot access. Pretending as if it's business as normal, but apparently, according to the Kennedy team, the DNC at the last second and is inventing a rule to invalidate his campaign's list of signatures. We're seeing the dirty Democrats once again up to the usual, flexing their power and weaponizing the legal system in an attempt to force their preferred outcome. What happened to Robert F. Kennedy Jr. helps Joe Biden get elected. That narrative certainly died now, didn't it? Now, all of a sudden, Democrats are in such panic they want to change the rules at the last second to force him off the ballot. Democrats are also alleging that RFK Jr.'s campaign took illegal help to collect signatures and states. The Democrat National Committee on Friday accused Robert F. Kennedy Jr. of illegally coordinating with a super PAC to gather signatures for his independent presidential campaign. In a complaint to the Federal Elections Commission, the DNC alleged American Values 2024, a super PAC supporting Kennedy, collected signatures to put Kennedy's name on the ballot in several states. That violated federal law that requires a strict separation between campaigns and super PACs, the complaint said. So essentially, the multi-pronged lawfare campaign continues. The Democrats supposedly defending democracy are doing everything in their power to avoid democracy pretty much as expected because, of course, they're scared. They're scared of the reality. The reality that Robert F. Kennedy Jr. will pull support away from Joe Biden and help Donald Trump get elected. That is clearly the case. We have more and more evidence suggesting that that's the case. A massive 10-point shift towards Donald Trump. Trust me when I tell you Democrats are panicked. It's obvious they're panicked because they wouldn't be engaging in these style of shenanigans if they were confident that a third-party candidate being included in the process wouldn't affect the final results or would benefit them. They're doing this because they've realized that Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is appealing to Democrat left-wing minded voters who are feeling disenfranchised and disillusioned with the current Democrat power structure. And those people who are feeling disillusioned are probably having their stances reinforced as they see all of these corrupt anti-democratic shenanigans. I hate to break it to you, leftoids, but it was obvious that RFK Jr. was never going to appeal to the Trump base or conservative-minded people. When he announced his running mate the other day, this was the event. Yeah, I don't know, it doesn't exactly seem like a Republican voter vibe, if you ask me. And then, of course, there's his vice presidential pick, this lovely lady right over here, Nicole Shanahan, who happens to be a California native from Oakland, who's a lifelong Democrat voter and advocate of left-leaning causes. And I should also mention who also has deep ties to Silicon Valley and was previously married to Google's co-founder, Sergey Brin. Not exactly the most appealing to your average conservative, a lifelong Democrat political insider, married to a Google co-founder. Yeah, not so sure about that one. I think a lot of classical liberals, a lot of people with libertarian viewpoints who are also very socially liberal, I think a lot of those voters are going to be flocking to RFK Jr. I think they're going to be taking that box on the ballot out of principle. And obviously, if you're the DNC, that must be petrifying. And I think at this point, it's personal for RFK Jr. and his voter base. I mean, he's just straight up calling it DNC corruption at this point. You think he's going to back down? I don't think so. He's canceling events to reschedule them to make sure he could have all his T's crossed and his I's dotted before handing in the signatures in Pennsylvania. If he gets on the ballot there and he's already on the ballot in Michigan, it's bad news if you're Joe Biden. In other words, RFK Jr. is doing the Lord's work. An absolutely beautiful sight to behold. I guess let's see what happens next. That's the latest RFK ballot update. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and possibly subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.